Okay, welcome back to the coding circus. Today we're going to add in the last piece of the puzzle here. We need to make it so events occur when we walk into those different spaces. So let's, our, our proximity spaces that we created before. So let's transition to some code here, take a look. Um, we have our program that we created before. We're going to add in a couple things in different spots into this one. So the first thing I'm going to add in is some instructions for the player. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a comment. I'm going to put a comment at the top here. And these are the instructions. You'll be given instructions to walk to specific locations within the courtyard. When you reach your destination point, wait there until you are given further instructions. So that's our starting instructions. And then I'm going to add in an instruction panel using the viz info, which I also imported, import viz info. And I'm not going to give it an icon or a key. And this is basically just going to take the message from the um, comment and put it up on our screen. Okay, so there we go. We can now see that comment. And the reason why it's on the screen is because it's the first thing in the code. It has to be the first thing listed. Otherwise, the, in, the viz info will not find it. So basically just takes whatever comments at the top of your program and puts it up on the screen for your user to see. Okay. Now, um, what we need to do next, next is to create some tests so that way our um, user knows what to do in our program. So we're going to use a task manager like we did in the past. So I'm going to define a task. And I'm just going to call it destinations task. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a little delay in here. Here's my delay. So that's going to give me a five second wait time after they see the actions. So I'm going to set the visibility to false. And then I'm going to create another action. That's going to allow me to set the visibility to true of something. Remember, these are just actions. I haven't applied them to anything yet. Okay. I'm going to yield after I do that. Remember, it's going to yield means wait until you completed the task. And the thing I'm going to have it wait for is five seconds. Okay. Now I'm going to set the instructions. I'm going to change the text. And give them some instructions. Walk to the potted plant. Directly out side on the opposite side of courtyard. And if you change your world, you could change whatever directions you want there. Then I'm going to run the action delay hide. So that's going to uh, wait five seconds and then hide the instructions panel. 
And then I'm going to yield and basically wait for my person to enter the plant sensor. So once they enter the plant sensor space, then we'll get a trigger and it'll move on to the next thing. So right now it's just waiting. So I'm going to show and make the instructions visible again. So we're going to use that action. Probably spelling would be good. And then I'm going to set some new instructions. Once they've actually gotten to the first location, face the open side of the courtyard, walk to the piles of crates. directly ahead. To the right of courtyard. Ah, spelling and typing, not my strong suit. Okay. Then we're going to leave them up for a second using the run action delay hide. Actually, leave them up for five seconds. And then we're going to wait for the next location. So that's the next sensor. Oh, I think I, it's called cafe sensor. I think I changed the name to left sensor at some point when I was coding this. There we go. Cafe sensor, not cafe sensor sensor, cafe sensor. So it's um, going to wait until we enter the cafe sensor. And then I'm going to do, um, oh, wait, crate sensor, not cafe sensor. That's better. I'm getting ahead of myself. C-R-A-T-E-S sensor. OK, there we go. OK, uh, I think my tab is off somehow. Oh, because I didn't finish the line. OK, so instructions. Uh, then we're going to set some new instructions. Walk to the opposite side of the courtyard. Then we're going to do our delay again. And now we're going to yield to that cafe sensor. OK, so we're going to wait for the cafe sensor. Um, then we're going to show the instructions, which will show our instructions. Then we're going to set the text to say, thank you for your participation. OK, so we have all of that put in there. Okay, 
just checking everything is right and I have the right spelling and everything is right. All good. So now um, we need to do some kind of um, task scheduler. So let's go all the way to the bottom here. And schedule our task. So um, manager on enter, uh, none, basically it doesn't care what enters, and we're going to uh, enter proximity, so basically telling the manager that what we need to do when we um, have something enter that space, and we're going to schedule the task, a destination task. Whoops, sorry about that, I was cutting and pasting happy. We only need the schedule of the destination task, we don't need the um, adding the proximity, enter proximity yet, because that's going to be our, our callback for events that when we enter other things like the avatars, what they're going to do. So we're going to have them do something different. So let's go ahead and run this with just the uh, scheduled task, destination task that we wrote, our method. And we get our instructions. <coughs> and then in five seconds, we should get the next set. So we walk. Let's put our boxes on. Tells me to walk to the plants. Okay, I'm in the plants. Then it says go to the pile of crates. I go to the pile of crates. And then finally it says go to the opposite side of the courtyard. And there we are. So thank you for your participation. So that's the whole thing. <coughs> now what we want to do is add in um, some actions for the other avatars. You know, what happens when we run into our um, avatar? And we're going to use those three. So I'm going to come up here and create another method. This time, instead of being a task, I'm going to create an event. Enter proximity. So if whatever sensor is triggered, so that's what the E is going to represent, whatever sensor is triggered, um, we're going to detect which avatar it was, the sensor for the avatar 1, 2, or 3. If it's avatar 1, we're going to say on the screen it's the print, the sitting avatar. And then we're, we actually have to have that avatar stand up and move when we change the state. So he's going to move a little bit and change the state to standing, which is going to be state 4. If it's avatar 2, we're just going to change it to state four, so he's going to stop standing idle. And if it's the dancing avatar, again, we're going to print it's the dancing avatar, and we're going to change the state from dancing to just standing idle. Basically, we're going to make them all react and change to standing idle when we see them. Now, we could also make them talk and do all kinds of things, but this is the, the, the basic shell that you can kind of work from that once you do get to your avatar, you can make your avatar do different things. Okay, so let's go down, and we now need to add in that line of code that will go ahead and call that function when we enter in the proximity. Now, this is going to trigger for every single proximity space. So every time we enter in a proximity space, um, it will tell us, I want to show you what that other parameter is. It will tell us um, that something has happened. And the sensor um, would allow us to specify a particular sensor. So we're, we could wait for a particular sensor to occur, and we could have different functions occur for different sensors. But for this case, I don't care which sensor is triggered. I'm going to say when any sensor is triggered, so that's why the first parameter there is none, call this function. And then we can put some special arguments if we needed to to send to that proximity sensor. But we don't need to send any special arguments. We're just going to call that function. No matter what sensor we hit, we're going to call that function. 
Okay. So now when we run this, and we walk up to our dancing person, he stops dancing. If we walk up to our sitting person, he stands up. And if we walk up to our idle person, well, he's going to go into that kind of talking mode too. So now we could kind of create, you know, different kinds of tasks and events. We can give a task for our participant to follow. And then we could create reactions within our world as they come up to different characters without having to hit them. So that's kind of great. So that's all I have for you today. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.